Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Last week we were talking about the characteristics of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience and kindness, as we read in Galatians 5, Colin. And you were explaining how for every Christian it's quite possible for us to take on those attributes too. And we're continuing this week with those characteristics, looking at goodness. Yes, all these characteristics are in us because they are the qualities of the life of the Holy Spirit that God has put within believers. So it's a question of not acting and reacting in our own strength in the flesh, but allowing the life of the Holy Spirit to be manifested more and more freely and fully in our lives. When that is the case, then we radiate the love and the joy and the peace and the patience and the kindness and the goodness. Now, we talked on Friday about kindness. Goodness is, again, linked with that. Uh, There's, I think, a natural sequence in all these qualities uh, as Paul lists them in in Galatians. Um, God is good. Uh, We all probably know the this this saying that uh, our brothers and sisters in Africa have. You know, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good, and of course, um, He is, and He is good all the time because the qualities of God never change. He is the same all the time, and so He is wanting to express His goodness towards us. And he does that in the wonderful ways in which he is gracious to us. He doesn't give to us what we deserve. He gives us the very opposite of what we deserve. And um, because he is so gracious to us, he wants us to be gracious to others. Now, there's two ways in which we can understand this word goodness. God wants us to be good. That is, he wants us to be faithful from, in resisting sin. He wants us to do what is right to be the holy people that he's called us to be. After all, the spirit who lives in us is the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit. So he wants us to be good in that sense. But then he wants us to do what is good. In other words, to be concerned about the welfare of the others around us, to do for others what is good for them. And this is is the way that God expresses his goodness towards us, that he does for us what is good for us. He He would never do anything in a person's life that was not good for them. He always has our own best interests at heart. He has our welfare at heart. So he will do what is good. Now, he does what is good because he is good. Goodness is an attribute, if you like, of God. And so he's saying, I want you to do what is good. I want you to resist sin. I want you to resist those things that are in opposition to my will because then you will not only be good, but you will do good. And when you do good, others will benefit because they will receive not, not just something from us, but they will receive something of Christ in us. So if we adopt that, that becomes part of our character. You hear people saying, oh, he's a good man, she's a good woman. It's something to do with integrity, doing the right thing at the right time. It's something to do with integrity, but it's also to do with generosity. A good person uh, is a righteous person, not a self-righteous person. Self-righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God. Um, But he is a righteous person. He lives uprightly. Um, So he is a person of integrity, but he is a person who is concerned to express the goodness of God to others. So he is a generous person. Just as God is gracious to him, so, and, and you know, the righteousness that we have is a work of God's grace in our lives. So uh, he is wanting to do what is right, to give and to give generously 
to other people. So you'll find that um, when Christians speak about uh, others being, or oh, he, he's a good person, you mean, yes, he's upright, he's a person of integrity, but he's also a generous person. He gives of himself, he gives of the Lord, he is concerned about the welfare of others. So, I mean, let's take a very obvious example. Even non-believers uh, used to say that Mother Teresa was a good person. Even though they may not be Christians, even if they belong to other religions, they would say of a Mother Teresa, she's a good person, upright, one of in, a woman of integrity, but a generous person who wanted to do good for others and so just gave of herself, gave of her life to that. You think also of other Christian philanthropists, perhaps particularly of the last century, would they be illustrations of, 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 of goodness and godliness in that sense? Is that the sort of spirit that you're talking about? Yes, I mean, I, it's difficult to... Uh, name names, analyze. I mean, I mention Mother Teresa mm -hmm. because she's a, an obvious example. Um, but I suppose even in our day, uh, we all know people that we would say were good people. Um, you know, I, I had to take the funeral earlier this week of, uh, of a brother who I think everybody, I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people at his funeral. And that is because I think everybody thought what a good man he was. Um, loving, joyful, kind, generous. These qualities of the Holy Spirit were there in his life in, I think, an unusual way. And that is because he just loved Jesus so much. So, you know, the, these examples are there around us all the time. You've used the word generosity quite a few times in this program already, Colin, and I suppose that has to do with money, doesn't it? Um, yes, as n not essentially, um, but it will include money. Uh, a generous person has a generous heart. And if he has a generous heart, I mean, all these things are heart, you know, they, they, have, to be, they have to become heart motivation, don't they, to love, to... Um, be kind and good. Um, no, a good person has a good heart, and therefore um, he is wanting to express that generosity uh, by the giving of himself very often. I mean, you can have a good person that doesn't have much money, like a Mother Teresa, but um, actually because of the very goodness of what she and the sisters with her are doing, um, that produced a lot of money with which to feed the poor and, and so on. Um, so uh, it will, if, if a person has money, it will include being generous with that money, doing what is good and giving generously. And of course, the wonderful thing about giving generously is that you can never outdo God in anything, including giving. He will always give back to you more generously than you gave to others because he knows that he can entrust wealth to generous people, to you, to generous believers, to use uh, in the right way so then he can put more and more and more resources. If we, don't, if we don't handle the resources that he gives to us in a good manner, then why should he give us any more, you see? But if we handle resources well, then God will give us more and more resources. Jesus said you've got to prove faithful in little things, and then God will put you in charge of bigger things. I mean, that can include money. But it includes many, many other things too. The important thing that is that if a person has got a good heart, he's got a generous heart, and he will be generous in, towards people in the time that he gives them, uh, into being concerned about their welfare, in serving them, loving them, caring for them, as well as in the giving uh, financially. So much of it is to do with attitude, isn't it? Because, as you say, we may not have a lot in material terms, but uh, there's more to it than just material things. Yes, I mean, I've, I've, I've ministered the gospel over the years in some very, very poor areas of the world. And um, one of the most difficult things I've had to do 
is to receive the generosity of these very, 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 really poor people. Um, and, you know, instinctively you want to say, I don't want your money, I don't want your gifts, I didn't come here for that. I came, you know, to bring you blessing from God. And yet, I knew that if I didn't receive what they were giving, they would have been hurt, they would have been insulted. It would have put them down instead of building them up. And I, I can remember, I mean, vividly, I can remember this very, very, very poor situation. And I'd prayed for all these these people and they'd all put coins in, in a bowl after I prayed for them as a thanksgiving for what God had done. And they gave me this bag of coins. I mean, if you added it all up, it probably wasn't a great deal of money um, because, you know, they were small coins because people didn't have anything more than that. But, you know, I, I wanted to give it all back and and I knew I shouldn't. And their pastor said, no, no, you mustn't. So what I did was, of course, the next place I went to, I gave it. <laughs> I gave it away. I didn't keep any of it. Um, but it was so important just to receive that. And you see, that shows the generosity of spirit. Even though the people were literally on the poverty line, there was that generosity of spirit. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 